We're now going to discuss cancer as an evolutionary process, and we will examine it in six different segments. In this one, we will introduce what cancer is and look at some of its general characteristics. That includes what types of cancers there are, what the hallmarks of cancer are, the prevalence, trends in cancer risk, and one of the principal trade-offs in cancer, which is circulation. First, a few definitions. A tumor is an abnormal swelling of the flesh. Not all tumors are cancers. It's derived from Latin for swelling, and it is not identical with what doctors refer to as cancer. A cancer is actually a group of diseases that are characterized by the uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal cells that can invade and disperse. A neoplasm is simply an abnormal mass of cells that's caused by overproduction. So that's the first initial growth stage. It can be benign. For example, skin moles are neoplasms. I have a number of them scattered on my body. Premalignant neoplasms don't invade and destroy, but given enough time, they might evolve that capacity. Those are things like colon polyps that are picked up in colonoscopies. A malignant neoplasm is a fully developed cancer. Clonality means descent from a single progenitor cell, and the clonal theory of cancer evolution is central to our modern understanding of cancer. Now, there are lots of ways of classifying cancers. They can be classified by tissue type. For example, a carcinoma is derived from an epithelial cell. They constitute about 90% of all tumors. Sarcomas are derived from connective tissue. They're only about 2% of, of all tumors. They're derived from mesoderm. And leukemia is derived from essentially cells in our bone marrow. Uh, they constitute about 8% of all tumors, and they're derived from mesoderm. We can also classify by cell type. So for example, squamous cell cancers are derived from flat cells. Myeloid cancers, like myelomas, are derived from blood cells. Lymphoid cancers are cancers of lymphocytes or macrophages. And adenomatous cells are adenomatous cancers are derived from ductal or glandular cells. So that would be, for example, colon or thyroid or prostate cancer. You can see that cancer is many diseases, and they have different characteristics. However, all cancers have certain hallmarks, so they do share a suite of traits. They no longer need any external signal to stimulate their growth and proliferation. They ignore signals to stop proliferating. That suppresses programmed cell death, so they will not commit suicide by apoptosis. They can divide indefinitely. They stabilize their telomeres. They have increased mutation rates. They evade the immune system. And they induce angiogenesis, so the growth of new blood vessels. Interestingly, there are some characteristics here that we would like to see in our other cells if we wanted to live longer. For example, dividing indefinitely, things like that. So cancer cells actually have some characteristics that we might like to see if we wanted to make people live longer, but we don't want to see them in cancers. Because cancers can metastasize. That means they can, the cells can break off, go through the bloodstream, and invade new parts of the body. Now, what about the prevalence of cancer? The lifetime risk of cancer diagnosis in humans in countries like the US is about one-third. The lifetime risk of breast cancer in women is about 10%. Autopsies on individuals who are dying of other causes or corpses reveal many covert, covert malignant cancers and pre-malignant carcinomas in prostate, breast, kidney, thyroid, and other sites. Some of these studies were done on young men who had died in the Vietnam War. They were between 20 and 25 years of age. Very thorough autopsies were done, and they were discovered to have hundreds of premalignant tumors in their bodies. We essentially all have precancerous mutant clones, and with modern techniques, we can detect the fact that we have thousands of them 
In fact, every square centimeter of our skin has of cells that have a few mutations that take them on the way to a melanoma. If they lived long enough, all men probably would get prostate cancer and all women would probably get breast cancer. But we usually die of other reasons first, or we had previously been dying of other reasons first. If we look at the best estimates for the year 2006 in the United States, about 720,000 men and about 680,000 women died of cancer. And for both sexes, the leading cause was cancer of the lung and bronchus. For men, the second most important cause was cancer of the colon and rectum, which was the third most important cause for women. For women, the second most important cause was breast cancer. And then you can work through the rest of these. If we try to ask how well are we doing in improving our ability to deal with cancer? Look at this contrast between death rates in the United States in 1950 and in 2004. These have been adjusted for age because in 2004 people were living longer than they were in 1950. This is the rate per 100,000. 1950 is in blue. 2004 is in yellow. Much lower death rates for heart disease. Much lower death rates for stroke much lower death rates for pneumonia and influenza, and no change in death rate for cancer. So we are not doing much better. If we take a look at the death rates for men in the US from cancer between 1930 and 2003, these are the rates broken down by different kinds of cancer. So let's first take a nice example. The rate for stomach cancer has gone steadily downward. In fact, once we realized that a lot of stomach cancer was caused by Helicobacter pylori and that it could be treated with antibiotics, uh, that gave us a real handle on that one. However, if you look at some of these others, you can see that liver cancer has really been pretty stable. Leukemia has gone up a little bit and been pretty stable. Pancreatic cancer is quite stable. Colon and rectal cancer has been going down a bit, and this is mostly now because of screening with colonoscopy, but it's not a big effect. And you can see the great rise in lung cancer, which is now starting to drop since smoking has started to be less widespread. And if we look at that for women, basically what we see, we see the same pattern really kind of offset for women. Women have continued to smoke more than men have, and that has risen. However, uterine cancer, is going down and stomach cancer is going down for women and colon and rectal cancer as well. So you see it's a mixture of effects, but when you add them all up, there's really not much net change in death from cancer. Now, we have more cancer than other species do for at least four reasons. One is that we live a long time. We have a post-reproductive lifespan and People in their 70s, 80s, and 90s are actually very unimportant to natural selection. That means that the maintenance mechanisms that might prevent cancer in older human beings are not evolving to be any better. The second reason is that we have especially highly invasive placentas. And they are produced by stem cells that can move into the endometrium and can remodel arteries and can insert themselves into maternal tissue. Such cells are pre-adapted for meta metastasis. So if one of those stem cells, say 30, 40, 50 years later, picks up a few mutations and it can slip out of control, it's already set up with the basic suite of characters it needs to invade tissue. A third reason is that we are mismatched to risk factors that have been generated by our culture and civilization. They include tobacco, alcohol, a high calorie, high fat diet, air and water pollution, and contraceptives. Those are not things that Stone Age hunter-gatherers ran into. And our bodies are not set up to deal with them. We are probably currently in the process of continuing to adapt to all of them. Fourth, some of our reproductive cancers may be a byproduct of our unique sexuality among primates. Continuous cycling, continuous receptivity, and the potential for continuous sexual activity. Basically what that means 
is that the tissues in all of our sex glands and associated tissues, organs, are continually undergoing mitosis. And every mitotic event is an opportunity for a mutation. So that evokes some of the range of effects that we've just seen here. So to summarize, cancer is a disease that is caused by inappropriate and uncontrolled cell growth and movement. It's a collection of diseases. It's not a single disease. It is an increasingly important source of mortality in developed countries. Since we've gone through the demographic transition and we're no longer dying of infectious disease, diseases like cancer have become important as we age. If we lived long enough, because we had escaped death for other reasons, we would all die of cancer. Our ability to treat cancer has not improved nearly as rapidly is our ability to treat other diseases.